I just saw that ceasefire was starting to be everywhere. And everyone uh, I admire in Baltimore, all the artists and activists I admire in Baltimore were lifting up this movement. It became clear to me very quickly that this was something real and game-changing to believe in in Baltimore, which is my hometown. I just had this strong vision in my heart, like in my chest is the best way I can explain it, where people would just be like celebrating life for three days all over the city and just making com commitments to be peaceful and that it would really be that simple if everybody knew to do that and it was just happening all over the city, like how different the city would feel. It took off from there. So the ceasefire weekends happen February, May, August, and November, and they're always the first Friday through Sunday of the month, except in May when they happen Mother's Day weekend. So the focus is purposely to celebrate parents who've lost their children to violence. And there's always over 35 events that happen all around the city. If somebody gets killed during a ceasefire weekend, we do two things. So the movement finds the family and we give money and we, add, we put out a call to everybody that follows the movement to say, show up in this space where somebody got killed today, to just bless it and put love and light in it. Um, and that is the response that we have as a movement to every murder in the city. So we schedule time to go to every location where somebody has been killed and we do a variety of things from burning running sage to inviting our angels and ancestors and spirit guides into the space, touching the concrete where a person's body fell to just like put our own personal love and light into the concrete where their body was. And people can really do whatever they want to do in that space. We just ask for people to pay attention to their thoughts and their heart space. And to also, if they can, think about the shooter or the stabber, like whoever committed the murder, to send that person love on their journey, right? Because if we don't pay attention to healing a murderous mindset in our society, we're not going to be able to heal this epidemic. We can't just pile some people over in a corner and think that we're going to fix it. We have to be able to say that all of those lives matter that were involved in that tragedy, right? The person who did it and the victim of it, both of their lives matter. We stand in unison and, you know, with a person's light. And so we do that. We call it sacred space rituals. When it happens at seven o'clock, we call it sacred seven. You know, as Erica describes it, the sacred space ritual is uh, an opportunity to, to pour love and light into the space where uh, our sister or brother was taken by violence. Um, it is to watch Erica do this, guide this ritual, it is a, uh, it is a laying on of hands uh, on the concrete. It is both a very private and very public thing at the same time. Very private ritual, family, you know, bereaved family is right there but anyone can come. Anyone from Baltimore is invited to pour love and light into the concrete. And what I hope the music does is create a, not a literal space like the sacred space ritual where there is a spot on the ground in Baltimore's geography, but create a figurative space, create a musical space where you can sit for, in this case, six or seven minutes and be with this. I think, I think that's that kind of private communion in a public, uh, potentially in a public setting, is what I was trying to respond to in the music. Music is my altar. You know, it's where I take my pains and my joys to be cleansed and for me to be healed. Music does that for me a lot. And so um, it just makes perfect sense to me that when our spirits are moving in a movement, that art would be born out of that. And so we just say to people, whatever your heart leads you to do, go do that thing. Come to a public meeting, talk to other people about what you wanna do. There will be people who wanna join you in making that thing a reality. And that becomes like, that's why the movement moves is because people are doing what they think needs to be done in the city. You know, I've never seen anything sort of purer and more uh, with more potential to really and truly change the world than 
the kind of energy that someone like Erica gives off and that Baltimore ceasefire uh, puts into action every day on the ground.